Let's now implement the context steering behaviors in Unity. I have prepared a simple project where I have an enemy and a player. I can move and hit the enemy and eventually kill it, but it does not yet move. Now we can create a similar project by following my previous tutorials. The link will be in the description as well as you can download this project. If you are my Patreon, both links will be in the description. Now, if you take a look at my scene, you can see that we have those trees and rocks and all of those have a 2D collider so that we can collide with them and my units. So the player and the enemy has those small colliders that represent the collision between those obstacles on my map. In addition to that, the player is on the layer player and the player, if I open the a main game object has a hit collider with uh, which as you can see is much bigger this is because when the enemy will shoot a ray cast to detect if the player is visible it will be much easier to do that now my enemy on the other hand has only the small collider as and is on the layer enemy and the obstacles on my map are on the layer obstacle which will be very important when we start coding our logic for our AI to avoid those obstacles as well as to chase or detect the player. As for the layout of our system for our AI agent, it will be pretty simple. The enemy AI script will control all of the other components of our AI system. Next, we are going to create the AI data component that will store all the data about the current targets and the obstacles around the enemy. Now to detect the obstacles as well as the player, we are going to have sort of a detectors. We will pass the data from the detectors to the AI data script. And next we are going to run the string behaviors that will get the interest and danger arrays out of the data from the detectors. And they will be able to tell the enemy which way they want the enemy to move. So the seek behavior or chase behavior will lead the enemy towards the target, while the obstacle avoidance will lead the enemy away from the obstacles. Now to make a decision based on this data, we are going to create the steering solver, which will take into account both of the arrays for the obstacles, so the danger and the interest points, and it will output the uh, specific direction that the enemy AI script will send um, further to the mover of our enemy so that the enemy can start moving and attacking the player. In my project, I simply have the agent script and the agent script controls what happens. Uh, it has the reference to the weapon of the enemy as well as has the reference to the agent mover script, which is responsible for moving the enemy around. Okay, so let's start implementing the context steering behavior in Unity. I'm going to right click and create a new folder in my project. I'm going to call it AI and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to put all the scripts here. So right click, create and first we are going to create AI data and we are going to open it up. Okay, let me paste the code. All this code will be available on the GitHub. Link will be in the description. Basically, the AI data script will contain a list, uh, a public list of transform called targets, and it will be by default null. This will, those will be the targets detected by our AI in case we want to have multiple targets and we want the AI to choose which target is the best option for us to attack. Next, we're going to have a public collider to the array obstacles. And again, this will be null. And we are going to store here all the references to the obstacles around our enemy that it should avoid. Next, we are going to also store a public transform current target reference. So this will be our current target that we are going to follow. And next, we're going to have a simple method public int get targets count. Since those are both null, we are going to check if target is null, we are going to return zero, else we are going to return the count to avoid having a null exception reference exception error appearing in our code. Okay, let's save this. And to fill in those two collections, we need to now create our detectors. So let's go back to Unity. Okay, great. We can drag our AI data on our enemy since this will be the AI data specific to this enemy. And we need to have a reference to this so we can as well place it on the main object. Okay, so let's create our detectors. Right click, create a new C -sharp script. I'm going to call this detector. This will be the abstract detector. Let's click enter. Let's right click, create a new C -sharp script. I'm going to call this obstacle detector. Okay, and the third script. Let's right click, create a new C-sharp script, and this will be the target 
detector. Okay, so let's start with the obstacle detector. Let's double tap on this. Okay, let me paste the code here and let me explain this. So first of all, we will have some fields. So first one will be serialized field private float detection radius. And this will be set to two, which means that we detect all the obstacles in the distance of two fields from the two spaces from the enemy. Now this will allow us to only take into account couple of obstacles at once. Next, we are going to have a serialized field private layer mask layer mask, which will be the layer mask representing the obstacles. Next, we are going to have a serialized field private bool show gizmos, and this will be set to true by default. So we are going to display which obstacles was, were taken uh, into account in this frame so that you have some feedback from the system in case something doesn't work as expected. And lastly, we are going to have a collider to the array colliders where we are going to save the references to the freshly detected obstacles for the sake of our gizmo. Next, we are going to have a public override void detect method that takes in the AI data, AI data. This is a script that we have created a while ago. Now this has the override keyword because the detect method will be an abstract method and we are going to add to this obstacle detector the inheritance after those two dots. Let's type detector. And this will just make it easier for us to uh, get a list of detectors inside our enemy AI script that we are going to create later. So for now, don't worry about the stretch squiggly line. We're going to have a public override void detect the text in AI data, AI data, and we are going to use colliders. So this array equals physics to the dot overwrap circle all. We are going to create a circle cast that will de detect all the obstacles around. So transform.position is the center of our circle. Detection radius is the radius of the circle and the layer mask decides which objects are taken into account and detected as the colliders. And next you are going to assign AI data obstacles equals our collider, uh, colliders array. Okay, and this is basically it. The rest of the logic is how to draw gizmos. So we are going to prevent drawing the gizmos if we uncheck our uh, Boolean flag at the top. If application is playing and the collider is not null, we're going to use the red color. And for each collider, we are going to draw a sphere. So basically a dot representing that this obstacle was taken into account by, by this enemy. Okay, so to fix this straight squiggly line, we are going to uh, save the script. Let's slide up where there is the obstacle detector inherits from the detector. If you are using Visual Studio, you can right click on this and go to the definition. And we are in this uh, detector class. All we need to do here is delete the content, make this class abstract. So let's type abstract. Okay. And now I'm going to place this public abstract void detect method that takes in AI data, AI data. And this is it for our detector class. Save this script. Let's go back to Unity. Great. And last thing that I want to do is create this target detector. So let's double tap on the script to open it up. Okay. And again, we are going to inherit from our detector class. And since we did that, we will need to right click here, quick action and implement our abstract uh, method detect. I'm going to paste the code here. And I'm going to explain it again. So at the top, we are going to again have some fields. Serialize field private float target uh, detection range. Since this is the target detector, we're going to want to detect the player that is around, uh, if the player is around our enemy. And for this, we are going to set the radius to be five. Again, we are going to use a circle cast to detect if the player is around. Now we are going to need two layer masks. So serialize field private layer mask, obstacle layer mask and the player layer mask. This is because we will need to check also if the player is visible to our enemy and this is why we need to have the player layer mask here. Next we are going to have a serialized field private bool show gizmos as in the previous script and we are going to have a list of transform colliders. Again this is only for the sake of drawing our gizmos. Now we have our public override void detect method that takes in AI data, AI data. Now we take in the AI data as an argument to this method because we only want to have the reference to this AI data in one place in our enemy script and uh, this script will pass to those detectors and to other uh, so the 
to the steering behavior as the reference to our data that we want to use for our logic. Okay, so first of all, we want to find if the player is near. So all we are going to do is save the collider to the player collider, and this will be physics to the overlap circle without all. So this will only select one object, one collider, starting at the transform.position target detection range, player layer mask as the third argument. This will create a circle, and we are going to detect if in the circle there is an object with the uh, layer mask uh, player, so this uh, with the player layer on it. If we have that, we also need to check if we can see the player. So if the collider is not null, we need to check if we can see the player. So vector to direction to the player is the player collider transform position minus the position of our enemy. So transform that position, we need to normalize this. And next we are going to use a, a usual raycast hit to the hit equals physics to the dot raycast and we are going to start from the transform dot position so from the position of our enemy we are going to use the direction as the direction of the raycast target detection range will be the limiting uh, distance that we use to detect the collider and the obstacle layer mask is the layer that we want to use as the layer to detect uh, if there is a player or an obstacle there so actually the obstacle layer mask will also include the player layer so the naming can be a bit better for now let's take a look at the rest of the logic and we're going to have the if statement if the collider dot hit dot collider is not null so if we have detected something and this logic will basically check if the collider's layer mask is the same as the layer assigned to this player layer mask so this is just the logic that we use to check this uh, and if the object is on the player layer we are going to call the colliders equals new list of transform and we are going to assign the player collider dot transform since our script is very simple to check if our uh, logic is correct we can add this debug dot draw ray from transform dot position in the direction times the target detection range and then we can apply the color to just see if our raycast is uh, created correctly if we can indeed see the player or if there are some issues with our code if this is not true if we have not detected the player we are going to set colliders to null and in case we have no collider detected if the player is not near again we are going to set the colliders to be null and we are going to assign this ai data dot target equals the colliders uh, in any case we are going to assign this to our data now again, we are going to have this onDraw gizmo selected method. So when we have selected this object, we are going to check if show gizmos is not false. In this case, we are going to draw the uh, wired sphere, so the area of the detection and the collider that we have detected using this uh, logic. Okay, with this done, let's save this. Let's go back to Unity and implement those detectors. Okay, I'm going to select the enemy object. I'm going to right click create here a new game object. I'm going to call this detectors. Okay, and I'm going to check if my transform is set to be 000. It is. So I can create two new objects. Let's first create target detector. And I'm going to control D to duplicate this. And I'm going to call this obstacle detector. And I can drag on both of those the appropriate script, so obstacle detector and the target detector. Now, I want to check the obstacle layer mask to be only the obstacle, but also not only the obstacle, also the player. The idea here is that when we raycast our uh, ray, we can detect either the obstacle or the, or the player. So this is why we need those two layers. If we hide behind this obstacle, then the enemy will shoot a raycast and it will first detect the obstacle and that's what we want to achieve but if we go out of the hiding we're going the enemy will select the player because it will shoot array here at the player and actually we're going to be able to test it in a bit for now let's assign the player layer mask to be the player and this should be it for the target detector obstacle detector let's select it and the layer mask will be the obstacle alone and this should be now it Okay, but actually we are not calling the method to detect any of those objects yet. That's why we are not going to be able to detect anything yet. But we should also see the gizmos. So if we press play now, if we have the target detector selected, if we select the show gizmos, and if you toggle the gizmo on, you're going to see the circle that was created 
near the enemy so we may want to change the color of this basically this is the detection range for our enemy so to test it let's stop it and let's create our ai script uh, enemy ai script so let's click create a new c sharp script let's call it enemy ai and let's open it up okay great so let me paste the code here that we can use right now so at the top of the enemy AI, we are going to have a serialized field private list of detectors, uh, detectors, and we are going to have a serialized field private AI data, AI data reference, because we need to pass this to our detector. Uh, next, we are going to have a serialized field private float detection delay. So every 0.05 of a second, we are going to perform the detection. This could help us with the performance of our game so that we do not detect our obstacles and the player each frame but every specific time delay. Next, in the start method, we are going to call invoke repeating and we are going to create a perform detection method that we are going to start invoking from the start. So this is the first value zero and the detection delay is the repeat uh, rate. Next, we are going to create our uh, perform detection method so private void perform detection this might uh, this must match the name that we pass here as a string and we are going to simply loop for each detector detector in the detectors uh, this is our list and we are going to call detector detect passing the ai data reference okay so this is how we are going to run our detectors let's save the script let's go back to unity okay great Let's select our enemy uh, object and we are going to assign here the enemy AI and this script will need to have the reference our AI data that we have already assigned here. We are going to assign it and the detectors, we can assign the detectors that we have created. So we are going to drag the target detector object to our detectors and the obstacle detector to our detectors. Now we should be ready to test our detection mechanic. So let's press play. Okay. And if we select our target detector and check show gizmos, you should now be seeing this raycast shot from the enemy towards your player is the, if the player is close in range. So let me select the target detector and enable show gizmos. And now you can see that we are in the circle of this detector and we are shooting the raycast. If I move my enemy uh, behind the obstacle, even though the player is in range of our circle we are not shooting the raycast because the enemy is not visible uh, because the player is not visible and we are shooting basically the ray at the obstacle here now if we select the obstacle detector you should now see the red dot appear on top of this obstacle if we move our enemy closer to this rock we're going to see that now this rock was taken into account so now we know that our detectors for the enemy work Let's take a break and in the next video we are going to finish implementing the string behaviors to make our enemy chase our player. See you in the next video.